Mercedes AMG Interview Lounge. Nowhere else would it happen but our show talking to Dr. Brian Ho <laughs> about saving Froggy's life with his aneurysm. And then all of a sudden in our Zoom room, here comes Dr. Oz. Poof! Just out of nowhere. That was Dr. so Oz. cool. Of course, it was planned to have him here. He doesn't just pop in when he... But you know, you're more than welcome to pop in anytime you want. You have the secret code, Dr. Oz. I thought we were having grand rounds. I came to consult with Dr. Ho. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dr. Oz, the busiest physician in physician land, uh, of course, made his grand rounds at the hospital this morning and, of course, jumped into his super studio to come on and talk with us today. So we have many things at play. Uh, we have uh, COVID-19, which is starting to simmer, going from simmer to a boil, especially listening to us in Wisconsin right now, in Pennsylvania. Uh, and here, hospitals around the country and the world are gearing up for a, the huge spike that we're seeing and what's going to come of it. We've got to talk about that. I'm going to talk about, and I'm fascinated with this. You can actually go into the sewers. You can look at people's poo and pee and tell, tell us how many cases of coronavirus are popping up uh, in the city. I want to oh. talk about that. Uh, what are, what else do you want to talk about? Everything Dr. Oz, you start. Well, I got Michael Strahan on. We'll talk about him. I lost his fa father this summer. Uh, we'll talk about Tupac Shakur. Could he have been saved? Class Action no. Park, which is a topic I'm going to cover. It's actually Action Park in New Jersey, which many right. listeners in this part of the country remember. But I want to also talk about some of these crazy things, murder hornets, you know, giant <laughs> hurling asteroids. But can I start with this? Let me start with the sewer because you brought it up. And I, yes. I, I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but when you, when you get COVID-19, the virus comes out of all of your holes. And yes. <laughs> one of the places we can look is in the sewage system. So I'm going to the New York City sewers today on the show, and I'm going to look at how many parts of New York City in this metropolitan area have COVID. Now, I'm going to give a little clue to everybody. It's in all parts of the city. It is simmering right below the surface. And I don't care where you live in America, there's a pretty good chance that if you look in the sewer system, you're going to find a fair amount of COVID. And what that tells us is though, though the, the virus may be tamed in some places, not in most places these days, it's just simmering there. And it can explode pretty quickly. And the main way, way the virus spreads is not by one person giving it to one other person. It's one person goes, starts mosh pit diving with his close friends without a mask on. And then all of a sudden, 12 people in the bar get it. And so that's how what we're seeing now with the sewer giving us a little tip off that we need to be especially cautious. I'm kind of concerned that you're going to be down in New York City sewers and uh, Nate and Scary are like, they're contributing to that. So a, a right. piece of them may float right by you. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> right above you. <laughs> so strange. Now, if, can you look at the sewer system, let's say in New York City and Cincinnati and Richmond and Miami and tell a difference in numbers between one and the other? Is there, yeah. Has it gone that far? You can, when you go into the bowels of the city, so to speak, you actually can assess how much virus is there. So for example, in New York, Coney Island, uh, parts of Queens have more virus than Manhattan is an example. So if you go to Cincinnati, similarly, you look in different parts of the city, Richmond, same, every city has different um, parts of the city that will uh, test differently because uh, the, the people have more COVID in that community. And it's one of the ways that in public health, we can say, okay, let's target, really get, warn people in this part of the town that they're going to have a bigger issue. And it's a smart system. And by the way, it's not just for COVID-19. We're learning about using the sewage system now to, to test for other types of viruses. To cut, you know, the influenza is another good example. So it, the, crazy, one of the side benefits of COVID-19 is it's dramatically improved our ability to do general surveillance. I don't know if you know this, but the flu, the incidence of the flu in Australia, which is obviously what we're going to experience a few months later here, is down 93%. There's right. almost no flu left because everyone's doing things to reduce COVID-19. And it turns out that it's really effective against things like the flu. Telemedicine's grown dramatically because all the regulations were reduced. That's not going to go away. That genie's out of the bottle now. So we're going to be able to use these technologies in the future for whatever other conditions we're suffering from. Well, the good things that are coming out of something that's so, so awful. Uh, question. I know you were talking about how uh, coronavirus is spread. It's through, you know, a lot of people hanging out with one person or two people that are infected or whatever. When it comes to Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, you know, the, the, the stories we're hearing now are not, even small, small gatherings should be questionable. W how do you feel about that personally? And what should we be thinking in, about this? You know, I'll, I'll joke it aside. You asked the best questions. That is probably the most fundamental issue we as a nation have to make peace around. Here's the truth. We're going to be in COVID-19 uh, territory for at least another year and pretty good chance in 2022. And I'm not saying that not to depress everybody. I'm just saying this is a marathon, not a wind sprint. So there's no point saying, guys, just 
go hard for another 20 days and we're done. That's not happening. It's like having a trainer that lies to you. And then, of course, eventually you said, I'm not going to exercise anymore. I'm never coming back, in fact. I don't want people cheating because of COVID fatigue. Let's tell people what really is going to go down. So if you've got another year and a half of this, taking away Thanksgiving and Christmas from you, your family, especially the older members of your community, is devastating. The deaths of the spare start to skyrocket. So is there a way for us to get together without destroying smart behaviors towards COVID-19? Well, look around the world. As you know, Elvis, my show is in 100 countries. So I travel to these countries, and I do, and I talk to these guys all the time. Some countries are doing really well with COVID-19, have almost no cases. Others are getting destroyed. The difference is the places where people haven't mixed politics into the equation and have actually focused on the most important things and let the smaller things go, they're still keeping on the right track. So here's what I would do. I would definitely go out for, thank, for uh, trick or treat. Why? It's outside. Less than 5% of all COVID cases are passed when you're outside. So as long as you're outside in a well-ventilated area, or even if you're indoors, leave the windows open or make sure the air exchange is good and you have new filters in your house, you're relatively safe. So I don't want people giving up high moments because when they have to really buckle down on things that matter, like wearing a mask, social distancing, they won't do it anymore. I'm having people over, my family, not no one else. Our pod's coming over for Thanksgiving. I've got, my, you know, obviously Lisa and Daphne are great chefs. So we got all the food taken care of, but I'm going to make sure that the older members of the family who are vulnerable aren't going to be exposed to everybody else. They're going to have to be a little separately, but they're going to see the kids playing, which brings joy to their lives. And I'm giving presents for Christmas, by the way, not taking Christmas away and canceling it because if Scrooge shows up for Christmas, guess what? New Year's Eve, people are going to be partying on each other. Wow. Very good thinking. Absolutely. Yeah, Danielle. Oh, I want to know about the false positives because we hear all the time about this person had it in the morning and then they tested them again in the afternoon and they didn't or, you know, whatever. And that there's a lot of false positives. Why is that? So when you test everybody to screen, which is, for example, what I do at my studio, right? We tape over at CBS. I've got, you know, dozens of people, hardworking individuals. We test everybody. So once in a while, if you do enough tests on people who have no symptoms and have no real exposure to the illness, you're going to once in a while get a false positive. And I spoke to the White House task force about this. And um, the, Admiral Girard, who's the testing czar of the country, told me that there are, that there are more, um, in that setting are, that I'm describing with routine screening, there are more false positives than true positives. And that's concerning. But that's unfortunately how it works if you screen everybody. Now, if you're screening only people who are your, who have a concern, who are exposed, who have symptoms, it's different. Then you get a, a really good read because people are already at risk. But it's one of the, for example, the third baseman for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, you know, Justin, maybe drill, maybe not, but I'm a little dubious that he's the only player on the team that tests positive. Makes me believe that in a virus this contagious, more than one person would have got infected. So if you retest him, maybe he's going to be, uh, you know, negative next couple of times. And the state the government has no way of telling which one was true. The first test that came back positive or the repeats that came back negative. That happened in my studio last week. I had someone who tested positive. Uh, she, I immediately retested the person uh, multiple times, all came back negative. So I, and they never had symptoms. So I suspect that they were falsely positive, but I can't tell. So I got to pull her out of the lineup. Wow. Yeah, Gandhi. Okay, I just read some information talking about the flu shot and how actually important the flu shot was in relation to COVID because apparently, and please tell me if I'm wrong, people who had the flu shot last year were like two and a half times less likely to be hospitalized and three times less likely to end up in an ICU. So is the flu shot super important in relation to all of this? The, sh the flu shot's important for two reasons, Gandhi. First, you don't want to have the flu or COVID-19 because then you got to figure out which one you have, right? And now you're really in trouble. We also know people who have the flu do not do as well with COVID-19. But your point is a superb one. And I saw that data and I think it's real. Uh, getting the flu shot may do one of two things. May, it may actually sensitize your immune system so you're a little better prepared. Or it might be that people who are conscientious enough to get the flu shot are also conscientious enough to wear their masks and social distance. So it may just yeah. be an association, not a causation, but it does seem that people who got the flu shot did better. Why, you know, at this point, I'll do anything that helps. So I, yeah. I got my flu shot. I gave it to everybody on my team. They, they, I brought the nurses to the studio. I think it's a smart way to go. Tupac could have been saved. Yes, what? California. <laughs> you know, I, I tell you, I've been fascinated by how many celebs we know that died Elvis is another one, by the way, that I'm tackling that probably could have been saved with modern right. medicine. Tupac, for sure. He had a lung injury. And at the time, you know, they didn't have technology like we have now to stop the bleeding quickly. And also, they took his whole lung out. 
we would have been able, I believe, to save the lung. It would have changed his ability to thrive. Now, I don't know if he'd been singing oh, wow. again afterwards, but I think um, that there's a whole history around stories like Tupac. You know, they never released his autopsy, and, 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 but we do know, and I spoke to the one person that's known to have seen the actual autopsy report, but he, uh, the one that she was able to get a picture of and, and shared it with me, he was 225 pounds when they declared him dead. Tupac was not oh, wow. 225 pounds. So something's no, not no. right here. Yeah. Wow. Huh, if, huh. Uh, so look, Dr. Oz, a billion things. He's like a machine gun of stuff. Uh, New York sewers, uh, Mike Strahan on the show. Tupac could have been saved. I mean, it goes on and on. Yeah, Froggy, we, uh, really quick. I got to play Tupac here. What's going on? <laughs> so Dr. Oz, a, a procedure like mine that I just had, how, how different has that changed over the last five years? Gargantuan, because they were able to, 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 what you had was a double secret probation operation. Dr. Ho snuck in there, by the way, one of the best in the nation. Um, and that made that you checked and looked around, which matters. So if you're out there thinking a procedure, double check, triple check, get double second opinions, it matters. But he snuck in there without your brain realizing he had been there, was able to clip that baby to get it out, you know, to, to stop it from exploding and killing you. And he did it without damaging tissue around you. That is the major advance that we're making in medicine. It's these stealth approaches where we sneak in there and can knock out the bad guy. The best solution to COVID-19 metaphorically will probably be something similar. It's probably going to be these antibody cocktails that can go in there without hurting you, just target the COVID-19 that's coming at you. And by knocking it back, let your immune system defend you. That's why these therapeutics have already reduced the death rates from COVID close to half in many parts of the country, which is what we want. Because between the vaccine cutting it in half or more and these therapeutics cutting it in half or more, we can go back to parting it up with Elvis in studio. Here's the thing. When, when, when uh, Dr. Ho went into Froggy's brain and found the aneurysm, he lifted it up and there was another aneurysm hiding. Yep. Stealth, a stealth aneurysm down below. Yep. And uh, thank God he found them all. Look at yep. it. Froggy. Very lucky. I'm extremely Absolutely. lucky. All right. Scary, thank, thank you, Dr. Oz, for your help as well. And uh, some people are texting and saying, no, Tupac is actually alive. <laughs> <laughs> he's living See? in Mexico mm -hmm. and he's listening to our show right now. It could so, be because he wasn't 225 pounds. So who knows? Yeah. Maybe it wasn't yeah, him. But, but I'll tell you, I actually, I couldn't show it on the show because it's too graphic, but I found an autopsy picture, the only one known. And I saw it myself. So I oh, think wow. Tupac died. Oh, okay. Okay. Definitely him. <laughs> we'll have to believe you on that. Dr. Oz, we love you. Love you too, my friends. Mercedes AMG Interview Lounge.